Well, I think you have to have persistence with the running game. You know, typically defenses are going to try to take the running game away from opposing offenses. Uh, defenses don't want teams to be able to run the ball and can kind of control the pace and the tempo of the game uh, by running it uh, anytime they want to. So they're going to get geared up to stop the run. And so you have to be persistent throughout that process. Sometimes the runs early in the game aren't going to be that great. It might be two or three yard runs. It's got to keep sticking with it. And, uh, and then you, you said it, uh, being effective in the passing game certainly helps that uh, when they're having to play more coverage. And, and, and limit the number of guys they have in the box, I think naturally you're going to be able to run the ball better. So, you know, being balanced, being able to attack a lot of different ways, starting with running pass, is critical to good offensive football. I think we all know that. Well, part of it is to play those guys. You know, we think each of those guys has some strengths and they have some different things that they can bring to our offense and give them opportunities to do it and uh, line up in different spots and do different things to help attack the defense. And uh, uh, again, uh, we didn't play well enough offensively. Uh, yesterday, but we do think as we go forward that, that mixing those guys in and giving them all an opportunity to contribute will be a good thing for our team. Yeah, I thought he missed some throws uh, in the game. Uh, sometimes he and the receiver weren't quite on the same page. Uh, there were times when there was some pressure and maybe he hurried a throw or didn't get his, have his feet underneath him the way he needed to. And, uh, and, and we didn't complete uh, maybe some throws we were capable of completing. And uh, so we'll go back and look at those things and, and try to get better. Uh, I know this, he's going to come in and work hard. And you know whatever it is, we'll, we'll get locked in on it. He'll focus on, on improving it and, and hopefully get better this week. I have a tremendous amount of faith in Scott. And uh, you know we just have to do a, a better job collectively as a staff and as an offensive unit uh, to help us move the football and score some points. And uh, you know, that starts with basic execution, play after play, not beating ourselves, and then finding ways to generate some big plays. Hello friends and welcome into the Cowboys Report presented by Tavor. I am your host, Tom Downey. We're going to take you now to some Cowboys news and yes, we'll have our therapy session on the game as well. But first up, a little news item here for the Dallas Cowboys. They've made a roster adjustment. They've added a new offensive guard in Xavier Suafilo. Cowboys signed him to a two-year deal with very limited guaranteed money. They also released Kadeem Edwards in a related move. Suafilo is a former second-round pick by the Houston Texans, was cut by the Tennessee Titans this uh, after uh, training camp, after the preseason. The Cowboys worked him out last week. Now they've brought him in. Again, a former second-round pick. Has not lived up to expectations, but the Cowboys needed offensive line depth on the interior. Remember, they traded for Parker Anger, and now he is on IR, which is a bad break there. But Suafilo will take over once he's learned the offense as the team's top backup interior guard overall. So good news there for the Cowboys and, and Suafilo to bring him in. Hopefully, he can get a little bit closer to living up to those expectations. The Cowboys are in bad shape if Connor Williams or Zach Martin goes down and misses an extended period of time. We'll take you now to our Cowboys Rumors Roundup, but first you got to understand what the stars mean that you'll see on screen. Zero stars, it's the number of fights Odell Beckham won against the net. It's fake news, don't buy it. One star, a small shred of truth means people are, and then two stars means people are talking. Three stars means it's pretty likely, not quite set in stone, but you know, we're, we're getting there. And four stars means Zeke Eaton, something he didn't really do in week one. On to the big rumor, the one that everyone is still talking about. Randy Gregory, is he going to face a suspension or not? Things have kind of died down later last week, and then Adam Schefter comes out with his report that Gregory is indeed facing NFL discipline and that he suffered a substance abuse relapse last month. I'll give it two stars because I just don't know what's going on right now. I don't think the Cowboys know what's going on, so I don't know what's going on either. There have been media reports about this for several weeks, not at least a week and a half, I guess I should say. The NFL has not made any public comment because, well, of course, they're not going to. And Gregory's camp and the Cowboys say, hey, we don't know of anything bad that's going on. We think Gregory's fine. We think he's going to play in week two. So I, I'm just very confused about this, this whole situation. Here's what Jerry Jones had to comment about this as well when asked about Randy Gregory. He says, I wouldn't make much of it. I don't think these reports have any substance at all if you really want the truth to it. I just don't know where we sit right now with Randy Gregory. I certainly hope there's nothing wrong, but there is some smoke fire here. So we'll keep it two stars for now. And if something does happen, if there's a suspension or what, we'll let you guys know. Also, make note of this, there has not been a single claim of a failed test, just a relapse of some kind. So does that mean there's a failed test or not? I'm not sure. Everything about this screams two stars firmly in that rumor category. I am a Rico Gathers hater. 
but should Rico Gathers be active on game days for the Dallas Cowboys? Well, this might surprise you, but it's a four star for me. It's a no brainer. Gathers wasn't active in week one, and yet the Cowboys used all kinds of two tight end sets. Dalton Schultz played two snaps and wasn't really active on special teams. So if you're going to have three tight ends active, you're going to use all these two tight end sets, and you're not going to use Dalton Schultz? Shouldn't Rico Gathers be active on game day? Now, maybe this was a discipline for his weed arrest, arrest which hasn't been said, but kind of makes some sense, I think. And you certainly could have used Rico on third and longs. Now, Rico Gathers is not the best tight end on this Cowboys roster. Stop it. That, is, that doesn't make sense. He's not good at 50% of the job, i.e. blocking. But I'd just like to have Rico out there on passing downs. All those third and longs, I'd rather have Rico out there than Blake Jarwin and Jeff Swain. It's a no-brainer for me. I'm typing in Y or one for yes. Rico should be active on game day. All right, folks, we're trying to get our Cowboys Report YouTube channel to 5,000 subscribers. That is the next big number for us. Go to YouTube.com slash Dallas Cowboys Report and subscribe. We appreciate everyone that has already done so. More great Cowboys cover coverage coming up for you all year long. Little injury note here, Xavier Woods, will he be back for week two? Well, it's still early in the week, obviously, but for now, we're going to go ahead and give this one just two stars on Xavier Woods. Now, the Cowboys are unsure if Woods will play in week two. That's what Jerry Jones really straight up said. He said, quote, I don't know, but he's getting closer to playing. Woods coming back from that hamstring injury, so he's getting closer, has yet to practice. It's a Sunday night game this week against the New York football Giants. So we'll keep it at two stars. The Cowboys, we know, and you guys know, the Cowboys know, everyone knows how finicky hamstring injuries can be. They won't rush Xavier Woods back. And by the way, as we'll talk about later on in the show, when we play stock up, stock down, Kevon Frazier actually looked pretty good in week one for the Dallas Cowboys. So two stars for now on Xavier Woods. We'll see what ends up happening there. Now, y'all like beer, right? Of course you guys do. So if you guys want your own box of beer, you got to check out Tavor. It's free to sign up, and if you go to Tavor.com and use promo code CHATSPORTS, they'll give you 10 bucks off your first purchase. They have this, they, they, last week they had this delicious Key Lime Pie IPA. I'm not an IPA guy, but it was really good. So if you like craft beer, you got to check out Tavor at Tavor.com. On to some more rumors here for the Dallas Cowboys. Scott Linehan, this one will get you guys going. Is he going to stay as the play caller for the Dallas Cowboys? Well, I don't really agree with it, but it's going to be four stars because Jason Garrett says he has a tremendous amount of faith in Scott Linehan. To which I say, but why? Because Scott Linehan, really the past half of last year and this year, things have not gone according to plan. And since that 11 game win streak they had last year, or excuse me, two years ago, Cowboys are 500, which is just classic Jason Garrett. The Cowboys could not run the ball against the Panthers, especially early on. Pretty much everything went wrong for the offense. And I know that there's a lot of stuff to blame. We'll talk more about that. But should the Cowboys dump Scott Linehan, at least as a play caller? You got offensive savant Jason Garrett as your head coach. Maybe he should be calling the plays. I'm fine with that. I didn't like Linehan. I wanted him fired after last year. But so far, the Cowboys and Garrett are tying their season to the play calling of one Scott Linehan. Stick on the offense here and... Is Dak somewhere between Jared Goff and Cam Newton in terms of play? Uh, one star, Jerry, uh, sometimes you say stuff and you, you make me go, wait, what? Because once, how is Dak Prescott between Jared Goff and Cam Newton? In terms of play style, I actually kind of agree with it. it, it not the best pocket guy in Jared Goff, but good enough, and Newton can run. So from play style, sure, I get it. But talent-wise, not really what we've seen the past season you know, half a season or so. So one star, I kind of get it from the play style argument, but don't really get it from the on-field play argument. So speaking of Dak, do you think he's the franchise quarterback for the Cowboys? Type A for yes, B for no. Yes, week one was bad. We're going to talk more about here in stock up, stock down. I'm not going to push the eject button on Dak Prescott. You have them for the full year. Let's see how he goes. If you want to type in C for maybe, I'm okay with that. But as of right now, I lean more towards yes than no. With that said, a lot of room for improvement with Dak Prescott. One last rumor for you guys, and I know you're going to love this one. Is the Cowboys season over? Oh, this one's just unbelievably fake news, and guess where it comes from? Where else but Philadelphia? That's just classic Eagles, right? NBC Philadelphia's headline was that is the Cowboys season already over? Come on, guys. It's week one. I know that I believe that every game matters. Some, like producer Harris says, September games don't matter at all. I think they do. Yes, week one was a disappointment. 
No, the season is not already over. Heck, look at what's happened the last five times the Cowboys started the year 0-1. They've made the playoffs in three of them. Yeah, week one was a disaster. It's not what anybody wanted on the Cowboys, you, me, anyone. The season is not over quite yet. So with that in mind, what will the Cowboys record be this year? Let me know in the comments section. I had them originally pegged at 10-6 and six or 9-7, and seven, but I thought they were, that they were going to win in week one. So I'll knock it down. 9-7, and 8-8. Eight and eight. Season is not over. They're going to be in the playoff hunt, I think. I think this offense needs more time to grow and develop because clearly the offense has major issues, which we'll get to here in our next segment. Which is, by the way, Stock Up, Stock Down. I am your host, Tom Downey. You can follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDown. Hit me up with any questions you got on the Cowboys. Of course, I always appreciate a follow as well. So we'll play Stock Up, Stock, stock Down. We'll start with the positives, right? Stock Up, number one. How about Tank Lawrence? This isn't, this isn't a surprise, though, right? Like, Demarcus Lawrence is good at football. All right, four hurries, a sack, three tackles for loss. The dude just looked dominant in week one against Panthers. Now, to be fair, Panthers' offensive line is not so good, but he did beat Trey Turner for a play. So I liked what I saw out of Demarcus Lawrence. Easy stock up for me. I'm actually kind of keep a similar theme here with some of these early players because the defense overall, stock up. Speaking of Demarcus Lawrence, how many sacks will he have this year? He's on pace for 16, but we know it's very tough to get sacks in the NFL. How about 11? How about the over-under set at 11? Is that fair? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. One more stock up, a guy I did not expect to see, Daniel Ross. Now, I, I recall being asked, I might be misremembering here, uh, why did Daniel Ross make the roster over Jihad Ward? And my response was, he made plays in pads. And that's what he did in week one. A critical forced fumble of Christian McCaffrey. Only played 17 snaps, not, not a, a starter by any means, but he got on the field, he wasn't a, a liability, and he made some plays. That's exactly what you want out of your backup defensive lineman. I liked what I saw out of Daniel Ross this week. He's not going to be the, the, the next Aaron Donald, but he can play a role on this Cowboys defensive line. One more defensive lineman about Malik Collins, and he once again showed off why he can make some plays as a pass rusher. Now, still probably not 110% coming off that foot injury, but he did have a nice sack of Cam Newton. I like Collins as a potential rotational guy, especially as he comes back from his injury. There's a role for him on this roster. Had a really good first year, not as good last year, thanks in large part to having to play the one technique spot. Keep him at the three technique. His stock will continue to go up. We'll stick on defense again because, well, that was kind of the only positive thing this week from the Dallas Cowboys. How about Anthony Brown? Now, you guys know, I know many of you have as well, have criticized Anthony Brown in the past, and accurately so. But against Carolina, he was good. One catch for five yards on two targets, broke up the other one. He handled all of these slot cornerback snaps for the Cowboys. If I get the Anthony Brown I saw against Carolina each week, I'm going to be feeling a lot better about this Cowboys secondary. So he's certainly not a, a home run player or an elite corner by any means. But Anthony Brown did his role, and he did his role well this year. So Anthony Brown, good, good job for you. You get a stock up. Overall, the secondary in general had a pretty much stock up this week. So we'll mention Byron Jones. Five tackles, didn't miss one. And he mostly shut down Devin Funches. Now, Funches versus Jones is a matchup that I liked in favor of the Cowboys because Funches is kind of like a big tight end or I guess a small tight end. And Byron Jones, we know he can cover a tight end. So targeted four times, three receptions for 41 yards. Didn't really let Funches get going overall, though. I was very pleased by how Byron Jones played for the Cowboys in week one. One more defensive stock up here for the Cowboys. How about Kevon Frazier? Yeah, he's playing with that harness on his shoulder and still looked really good. Seven tackles, a pass breakup, one tackle for loss. Was targeted three times. Only allowed two grabs for 16 yards. I think in reality for the Cowboys, they want Frazier as their big nickel safety, the number three guy behind Jeff Heath and Xavier Woods. But from what I saw this week for the Cowboys and, and Frazier, I was very pleased. Jeff Heath, by the way, almost got a stock up, but you got to catch that deflected pass and ended up dropping incomplete after Sean Lee broke it up. Heath is always somehow in, in the right spot at the right time. I love him for that. But Frazier had a good week. So, folks, will the Cowboys be a top 10 defense in 2018? Type D for yes for defense in Dallas. And type F for no because, well, it ended up being a failure. One note here on the Cowboys defense. I played them this week in my FanDuel lineup, and it worked out very well. And speaking of FanDuel, I'm hosting another game this week. DM me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowny if you want into my free, free to enter with the winner getting 50 bucks. Again, FanDuel.com slash ChatSports when you sign up. You'll get 20 bucks free with your first deposit. So again, DM me on Twitter at what going down if you want into my Cowboys only. 
special FanDuel Week 2 game winner gets 50 bucks. Those were your stock ups. Let's go now to your stock downs. And a lot to talk about here. So we'll start things off with Mr. Scott Linehan. Uh, first off, should have been fired last year. I That's the way I feel. He was back, and it's so weird to me to watch this Cowboys offense have weeks to game plan, and months to game plan, really, and to have a brand new offensive core around you. You lose Jason Witten, you lose Des Bryant, and the way that the game plan went makes me think that this coaching staff has zero idea on how to properly use the personnel that they have. I'm not saying it's elite personnel, because it's not. It's probably not even that good personnel. But the Cowboys' use of multiple tight end sets makes zero sense to me. Why, is, why are Jeff Swaim and Blake Jarwin getting almost as combined many snaps as the top two receivers? Why did you run so many two tight end sets, Cowboys? Tight end is no longer your strength. You have got to find an offense that doesn't rely so much on the tight end. Use more wide receivers. Are you really telling me that Swaim and Jarwin should be on the field more than the, the top five or six receivers that the Cowboys have? Why were you running two tight end sets on third down? What are you doing, Scott Linehan? That is a classic example of not knowing and not using your personnel right to, to get the most out of them. I do not trust this coaching staff right now. Now, go prove me wrong in week two. They'll bounce back, I'm sure, at some point. And the Cowboys, in general, are disastrous when they get behind the chains and out of, out of sync in schedule. They can't adjust. If they can't run the football, things fall apart. The Cowboys have got to do a better job overall of getting more production from their coaching staff. That, that was a big, big red flag for me. I, I'm typing in no for no and for no right now. I do not trust this staff. They did not make the right use out of it. Now, there's not just one person to blame, by the way. Dak Prescott, I don't think, was set up for that much success, but he struggled too. He missed a lot of throws, seemed off, and missed too many wide receivers. He just didn't seem comfortable at times. He kind of hesitated a little bit too much. His footwork was kind of off as well. He gets a stock down. Now, I'll defend him a little bit overall in terms of his long-term pr progression, but it's fair to be worried. Now, I'm not putting this, this in as a 10. I'll give it more like a four or so because there is reason to be a little bit worried about Dak Prescott. But in the end, you can worry, but you might as well stick with Dak all year long because it ain't Cooper Rush and it ain't Mike White who's ready to take over. So I know you guys are worried. I understand why. Got to pump the brakes a little bit, though, about the full-on panic around at one at Dak Prescott. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it wasn't just Dak. It wasn't just Scott Linehan. The offensive line was also a big disappointment for me. Now, my initial thought was that, ooh, Connor Williams had a bad game. Not as bad as I thought after a, a rewatch. Tyron Smith was not good enough. Had a, a, a gave up a hurry and a couple of penalties for, for Tyron Smith. Williams had a sack in a hurry. Joe Looney was fine. He's no Travis Frederick, but he got the job done. Zach Martin, the right guard, uh, he wasn't even peak Zach Martin. He looked off, two hurries. Now, maybe all those guys are trying to compensate for the player playing next to them. But Lael Collins, one sack, three hurries, two penalties, one of which was picked up. Lael, you got to be better. I know Carolina has a good defensive line, but that offensive line just didn't look prepared to play in, in week one of the NFL season. And maybe that's because of lack of preseason reps, which we'll get to here in a minute. But Cowboys offensive line, it was average to below average, and they need that unit to be elite. It was not elite in week one. It's a big reason why they struggled in the football. Like the left side of the line with Tyron Smith barely have, or averaged under two yards a carry. That cannot happen. So let me know, folks, who you think is the most to blame for the Cowboys' offensive struggles. It can be Dak, Garrett, Linehan, whomever you want. Just let me know in the comments section. Do you guys like beer? Of course you do. Who doesn't like beer? And if you like craft beer, you're going to love Tavor. Head to, to Tavor.com. Promo code chat sports gets you $10 off. And oh, by the way, it's free to sign up. Craft beers from all over the nation will be de delivered to you. And if you live in Dallas or Texas, you can use Tavor as well. So that's Tavor.com. Promo code chat sports for 10 bucks off. Another stock down on defense, one that pains me dearly to give out, Sean Lee. But it's also kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah, nice pass breakup and four tackles. He missed four tackles. What is going on? Sean Lee does not miss tackles. And if you think about the players we just went through on, on my stock down, Dak Prescott, the offensive line, even Zeke Elliott kind of falls in the same category. Sean Lee, the common theme, all those guys didn't get many, if any, preseason reps. I think the reality is the Cowboys were rusty in week one, 
and they need more reps to get going. So that's okay going forward, but it did impact them negatively for week one. Another stock down here, Terrence Williams, who has quickly fallen down the Cowboys' depth chart. Two targets in 19 snaps for T-Will, one reception for six yards, and T-Will, by the way, was actually fifth among wide receivers in snaps this week, which is kind of surprising me. Cole Beasley led the way with 43. He actually played great. He was the only receiver to actually step up this week. Alan Hearns had 38. He is, I guess, your number two. Deontay Thompson, I'd almost argue strangely, was third with 30 and didn't do much of anything deep downfield, which is his role, but that's back to Linhan, and we'll talk more about that later on in the week. Gallup was fourth with 29, Terrence Williams with 19, and there's 12 to 24 touch a game, Tavon Austin. Just kidding, the Cowboys were never, ever going to do that, and we warned you, I told you guys at the time, pretty sure Stephen Jones meant snap counts, and if you count the special team snaps, he had 14. Right in line with 12 to 24 touches for Tavon Austin. But overall, the receivers and Dak, they seemed off. The receivers in general were a, were a down unit. Frankly, the entire offense gets a stock down because beyond Cole Beasley, no one played all that well. Zeke even missed the key block, so no one was perfect this week. Another stock down, Andy Gregory. And not just because of the potential discipline coming up, but because he didn't do anything. 15 snaps, didn't record a hurry. Also left because he had a knee injury and a concussion. Now, he, I think he'll be okay to go for week two. I think he'll get cleared from protocol, but we'll wait and see on that one. Plus, of course, the whole discipline issue, which if you're watching on Facebook, stay tuned. We'll, we'll put that back here on loop for you guys again in just a second. One big-time stock down, Jordan Lewis, because guess what? Lewis didn't even play on defense this week. That's right. No snaps for Jordan Lewis, clearly behind Anthony Brown, which kind of makes me go, eh, I don't know if I agree with that. Anthony Brown played well, but I really like Jordan Lewis, so... Not a huge fan of Lewis getting no work on defense, but the Cowboys didn't use their dime package at all against Carolina. But Lewis, big stock down for me. Folks, if you like the shirt I'm wearing, you can get one of your own at Mizzen and Man. Go to comfortable.af and trust me, this shirt, made in America, by the way, is the most comfortable shirt you will ever own. It's made out of performance wear fabric, so it looks like a dress shirt, but actually feels comfortable. That's comfortable.af to get one of your own. One final stock down. I think you guys know what's going to come here. Brett Maher, you missed your only field goal after you replaced Dan Bailey. You're going to get a stock down. I'm sorry, buddy. 47 yards, kind of long. Just barely missed it to the right. Seemed online, but just wasn't good enough in the end. By the way, for, for Brett Maher, good job on kickoffs. You did that one well, but you got to make your field goals, especially when you're trying to replace one Dan Bailey. Speaking of, I'll get you guys all fired up. Should the Cowboys bring back Dan Bailey? I still think so. I, I, think, I think it was a mistake to cut Dan Bailey in the first place. And deep down, I am thinking, or maybe just hoping, that the Cowboys, that the Dan Bailey hasn't signed yet so that when Brett Maher struggles again in week two, they'll bring back Dan Bailey. All right, folks, get your questions in the comment section for our next mailbag. That will be on our next show on Thursday. So we'll see you then.